بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Okay, so the next thing we'll see what are the things can be automated, like what are the different types of tasks can be automated. Uh, we'll see some overview on that. So previously we have seen the different goals of automation and also we have seen the automation types and also the overview of the SDN, the software defined networking. Now here we'll see uh, what are the things can be automated. Now the first thing is like plug and play provisioning, initial provisioning of the devices. Now plug and play provisioning is like uh, automatic deployment of a new devices on the network where it can obtain the initial configurations whenever you, you add any new device. Now this is uh, something like, let's say I got a remote branch office, the branch location where I'm going to set up a new router, probably an ISR router, let's say. Now this router, I want this router, it's like a new router. Maybe you, you added a new branch office or maybe you replaced the old router with a new router. Now what I want is, I want this router to be automatically provisioned. Provision means like automatically that should connect and automatically that should get the initial configurations and automatically it should come up as if it is a configured, something like kind of pre-configured kind of thing. But when you are connecting a new router, it is more like a blank router without any kind of initial configurations. But we can do something called plug and play provisioning. And the plug and play provisioning, what happens is whenever you connect this particular device, so you connect this to the network, maybe to your company network or internet or whatever the network you're running. So this is going to connect to the gateway. So this is going to connect to your gateway. So which means this particular router, even though it is a blank, it do have some basic kind of configurations like basic DSCP enabled feature, where whenever you, and also it has information like what is your gateway and how you are going to connect to that. So probably kind of some basic information uh, will be present, which allows that particular router to connect to the gateway your actual gateway from where it will be getting the configurations. Okay, so it's going to connect to the gateway and it's going to ask for the configurations. Okay, so I'm like a new router and and what will be the configurations uh, on my router? And of course, it before to connect, it will be getting some DHCP to get an IP address. There are a few, few basic options run in the back end. Like DHCP is again the prerequisite for that to work. Now, once it asks the gateway for the configurations, okay, now this gateway is going to send out the full configurations, whatever the full configurations, that particular branch office, uh, maybe some, uh, with the help of some kind of software. So probably this gateway is going to run some kind of DNA center. That's a, a software which we are going to run on dedicated servers, okay. So it's a kind of automation software where you're going to manage from a centralized location. So you will be getting the full configurations from the centralized gateway. Okay, so now this ISR is going to, this router is going to download that particular configurations and, and optionally it can also download the image, depends. Okay, so which once it downloads the configurations, now this router works just like a, a router with all the configurations means you don't need to go to each and every branch office and do the initial configurations that is not required so we call this as plug and play initial provisioning where you can automatically deploy the new devices and these devices can automatically get the configurations or the images from the centralized gateway and this way we can reduce the time take normally it will take for the new device to be a part of the network and become functional. Because if you just think about uh, e configuring manually, that, that's going to take a lot of time. And even most of the time, you don't have an engineer on the remote location who, who can do the configuration. So maybe you copy paste, that is kind of old method without automation. Now the next thing is like the previous option we have seen the initial provisioning. And once your network is up and running, 
Now, once the network is up and running, and once we do have some kind of reachability you know, for IP version four or IP version six, whatever the network you are running. Now, these particular devices which are being discovered, like the end users, let's say, the users who are going to connect, the traffic should be segregated. So, so the path segregation can be done. So path segregation is nothing but separation. Like the simple example is like VLANs, which user goes in which VLAN. So, or which user will access which server so that you can restrict that. Okay, so this is kind of example. So even you can do this uh, path segregation also can be done dynamically where you can restrict or you can define which users can access what type of servers or separation of the traffic of the customers or separation of your user user traffic as well with the help of vlans uh, these are the other options so apart from that we can also automate something called quality of service policies now the quality of service is a method of giving a priority for specific traffic like let's say you have a voice traffic that voice traffic should be should be getting something like 26 to 56 kbps and it should be always go first or some other traffic like you got some sql traffic uh, where you get a minimum reservation of the bandwidth so you do some reservation of the bandwidth so generally you go to the individual devices like routers and you go and configure these policies the quality of service policies where you're going to separate the traffic and say that this particular traffic should get this much amount of bandwidth. So, so normally we can call it as a static quality of service policies where uh, the policies are configured manually on individual devices. So, but the problem with the static QS policies is there is no guaranteed uh, application, uh, there's no guaranteed uh, application availability. Like, like let's say you have an application running and this application is running some kind of video conferencing application with the Vivo IP running. And we have a guaranteed priority of traffic, priority for this traffic is let's say 256 kbps. And maybe, maybe the next day or in the evening, this requirement may change. So maybe you have more users connected in the evening uh, where you have a requirement is more and there should be some kind of dynamic uh, change of these policies. Okay. so. So maybe that particular bandwidth is not enough to run the application because the number of users accessing that application uh, is very high in the evening. And that, that, that way that application is experiencing some problems because of the lot of delays. Okay, so, so with the help of network automation tools, with the help of network automation tools, what we can do is we can address these problems. So we can, we can tell this particular uh, device or the controller, probably it is going to identify the application requirement dynamically end to end. So probably end to end requirement at that particular point of time. And based on that particular requirement, it can dynamically apply some quality of service policies. So these policies will be pushed to the network devices and depending upon that particular requirement, it can either allocate the specific bandwidth or, or you can say the bandwidth allocation or it can be kind of giving priority for that particular traffic. So this uh, quality of service policies can be dynamically automated according to the application requirements. So that is what uh, dynamic quality of service policies can also be automated. Apart from that, you can also automate the uh, security policies security policies again this is this can also be dynamic like you can you can take an example like like you're using some running some kind of triple in your network and you're going to run some access list or you are using some kind of Cisco external Cisco I servers for for authentication for, for some kind of device administration or some kind of accounting. So you got different different network devices and the different techniques we'll be using in our network to provide some kind of security. So most of these security uh, options, 
Now, now let's say I'm going to apply some kind of security. So with the help of this security options, whatever you're applying, it is going to analyze the traffic. Like if you take an example, you heard an IPS. Now this IPS is going to uh, analyze your traffic and depending upon that, if it identifies any specific threat is detected. So it's going to generate an alert. And as per that, maybe the administrator has to figure out that there is some kind of threat and according to this threat, what I need to do is I need to go and apply so-and-so policy. Okay, so-and-so policy, let's say there is a kind of external application, uh, probably some kind of attack. So according to that, you're going to apply the policy. But with the help of network automation, what we can do is we can automate the security policies. Means we can tell that, okay, if there is, if you detect anything, this kind of threat, we can tell to automatically apply the specific policy without manually doing it okay because normally we apply the static policy according to the thread but we can automate to apply the specific policy as per the uh, possible threads or depending upon the traffic analyzed based on that you can deploy a dynamic uh, policies to the existing policy you still have static policies it's not like we are not we are going to replace the static policy so the static policies will be still there on these devices, but on the top of it, we will be applying some kind of dynamic policies based on the specific requirement at that particular point of time. Okay, so these uh, dynamic policies can be automatically added to the specific group of devices. Like it can be a Cisco ICE server or maybe an IPS or maybe any other, any other security device in your network.